taking a second, I guess. Oh, hello. Hey, guys. We're live with Ashley Rates, one of my dear friends that I just spent some time with at the beach just last month. And she is a brilliant seller online. So, Ashley, say hello. 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 How are we? Um, so, Ashley was actually a guest um, like speaker at my event almost exactly a year ago because we did it on my birthday. So it was in Nashville, Tennessee, and she got up on the stage and she was sharing all of her wisdom about selling online. And she had several women at that event sign up for her course. Do you remember how many it was? I remember it being a lot. It was like, I think it was like close to around 40 people. Yeah, out of like 120 or so. Yeah. That was like a third of the room was running to the back to sign up to learn more from you. So um, how many of you guys watching right now um, are trying to sell online and struggling? Because you should be bringing all of your questions to this live right now because Ashley is the queen of selling online. She knows everything about how to do a live sale. I was reading some of your testimonies, by the way, and I saw somebody said they made like $1,600 on a live sale recently. And then there was another one that made like $800 and it was just in a matter of minutes on a live sale. So um, could you kind of explain what a live sale is for those who are watching that maybe don't know? Yeah, sure. Basically a live sale is we make our products. So you guys are painters that we're talking to here. So you're going to make your beautiful door hangers or your signs or your hand painted item. And then we are going to prep your audience and then you're going to go live like Tamara and I are live right now. And you're going to sell the product to the people that are watching you on the live. And so, I mean, that's basically the gist of it, but there's a whole bunch that goes into it. Like we've got to make sure that your right people are on your page. We've got to mm -hmm. They're engaged with you. They're used to you going live. And then we just build this frenzy up. And around this frenzy is your product. And here's a little tip and trick from me to you guys. People want something that somebody else has. And that's one of the psychology things that work with our customers as we're selling live is that if you only have two of something, there's like a fight like people want it. Not that we want people to fight on our pages, but over our product we do. And so it's really fun to get to see those comments kind of roll in with, you know, 10 people wanting, um, you know, when you only have one or two of one item. And so that's why it really works in driving that frenzy. And then we get to sell our product online and it's quick and it's not anything. Tamara and I have talked about this before. It doesn't have to be something scary because you don't necessarily it does it help to have a website or Etsy or an invoicing system. It does, but you don't have to to get started. So you can have something as simple as PayPal to be able to send those invoices out. Uh, so, yeah, it's something that's really good. If you're just getting started in business and building your audience, we can sell our product on a live and be able to make money. I don't know about you, but I would love it if I came on and was like, I have this thing to sell. And then suddenly 10 people are clamoring, like knocking each other over virtually to get to it. Um, because I know in the past, before I started um, doing very many Facebook lives, I would show up and, and show something I was trying to sell and it would just be crickets. You know, yeah. somebody would say, well, that's cute. But nobody was asking if they could buy it. They were just complimenting me on my painting skills. And so that got kind of frustrating after a while. Um, let's yeah, go that's in the comments. Pamela says, I'm currently getting a business plan together to start selling online. That's exciting, Pamela. Woo -woo. Uh, let's see. Hello, Marie. Welcome. And then Heidi wants to know, do you sell what's already made or do you have a few ready to ship? So that would basically be the same thing. Is that right, Heidi? It kind of sounds like the same. I, I think she's meaning like, do you make it to order? Yes, I think that's what you're what you're saying for sure. So we can run these sales a couple of different ways. And actually, we can do this exact same thing in one sale. So for instance, you might have some items that, I mean, let's just face it, there are certain things that we don't like to make over and over again, but our customers really like them, right? I mean, there's just certain items that we paint that we just don't like. However, it gets our audience really frenzied up and they really want that product. So those are usually sometimes the items that I might only have one of, and then that's going to drive the traffic. But then I've got some items that are really easy for me to be able to do. Like Tamara's going to teach you guys, you know, how to be able to paint letters here pretty mm -hmm. soon. 
those should be pretty easy to be able to kind of whip out, you know, more bang for your butt kind of thing. So that would be something that you could offer multiples of during that live sale, but then have some other items that you can make to order. I always do one to two week processing, even if the orders are ready to ship, just because, you know, you don't know, you could live in Texas and go through a snow ice apocalypse. You have no idea whatever is going to happen. So I always do one to two week processing, regardless if the item is ready to ship or not ship. Um, but we can set this up both ways and you can even do the same thing in one sale. So um, really it's up to you. You don't have to have 35 products. Uh oh, and she's frozen. Oh shoot. Am I frozen? Oh, you're back. You're back. Okay. Am I back? Yeah, you're good. So you don't have to have like 35 products be ready to ship. If you want to be able to take five products and then pick out like your special of the night that you're going to take orders for, you can set it up. I mean, whatever way, whatever strategy is going to work for you. And you know, that's my business is called Creative Strategies with Ashley Rates because there's not one strategy that's going to be a blanket for every single handmade seller out there. Uh, and so, and that's just the truth of the matter. Some people don't like to go live. And if mm -hmm. you don't like to go live, then probably something like Etsy is going to be a better option for you or starting a Facebook group that you can take pictures of your product and be able to sell that way. There's a thousand and one different ways that we can strategies that you can learn to be able to help you be successful in business. But as far as the live sales um, are considered, we can set this up a hundred and one different ways to be able to work for you. Well, I'm sure that's music to everybody's ears because I know everybody watching right now um, probably hears the word Facebook Live and cringes a little bit if they haven't done it before. Um, even those of you who have been doing it a few times maybe still don't love it yet. So just the thought that maybe you don't have to do Facebook Live in order to be successful is nice. Crystal Roberts says, I'm looking forward to the code book class. So she's talking about Ashley's course, which is what we're talking about today. So Ashley, could you maybe give us a little taste of what kind of things besides live sales do you teach in the code book class? Well, the number one thing, and I want you guys to comment here, the number one thing that I always see from everybody is whenever I go live or whenever I make a post, I hear crickets. I don't get likes. I don't get commenting and I definitely don't get shares. And so a lot of times people want to jump in and go like to the very back of the step of where they need to be able to be before they start with that very first step in business. And so through what we're talking about here, I teach you how to be able to learn who your ideal target market is, your ideal person. You have to understand that in business before you can be successful on any social media. So with that, uh, we learned that. That's for a full week inside of there. And we write stories and we do a big brainstorm session where there's peer feedback and things like that. Because if you don't understand that, then we can't scale with other upper level things like Facebook ads. If you don't know who you're targeting, you can't target anybody if you don't understand who that ideal person is for you. So we teach you who that is. And then after that, I'm going to teach you how to post with a purpose. And that's like my signature thing that I've always said, you've got to post with a purpose. So we've got to post for engagement. We've got to post to be able to market something, or we've got to be able to post to be able to sell something. So we really get into how to be able to get your ideal person, once we figure out who that is, how to be able to get them to engage on our pages. And once we can get the engagement going, then we can sell to them. So then we move into our third module and I teach Facebook live sales. I teach a signature selling thing that I came up with. It's called a five and five. It's five mm. products in five minutes. And I came up with this here about three years ago on my page because sometimes we don't have enough time to be able to make all the products for different things. So it's sometimes it's not as scary to be able to go live and show somebody how to be able to use our product. So it could be something as simple if you guys are painting door hangers here with Tamara, that you could maybe do like um, five door hangers on whatever color door that you have and you're showing them how to be able to stage their porch. Sometimes it's not as overwhelming if we're showing our people. So we show them five products in five minutes and I take you through that whole process and then the other one, because that's still done live, the other one that I do is a picture sale and how to be able to set up a picture sale just by taking a good product photo and setting that up. And we can do things like auctions. Um, I literally, I don't know if you guys caught it over my page, but are you okay if I share this story, Tamara? 
Yeah, absolutely. The other night, I, my my students were on and we were talking about live sales and her name's Dawn and she's a bow maker. She makes the big bows for the little girls. Yeah. But she took the auction strategy that we teach and she had, she, I think she called it a bag of bows and she had like five bows in there and ran it on auction. Now, mind you, her bows usually go for like six to $9 a piece. And she had a bag of bows that she started on halftime for um, like Super Bowl night. Yeah. By the time that halftime started to the end of halftime, her bag of bows went for $81, five bows. It bid up that auction. And so these are the kind of strategies that we'll teach you. And then at the back end of the course, it will be, um, we it's SEO, the basics of what that is. So search engine optimization, basically what people are typing in to be able to find a product. We teach you the very basics of that. So once you get done, you are ready with the foundation to be able to drive traffic to a website or you're ready to uh, be able to get into Etsy or something like that. So it's an eight week program and we go through all of that. So target market, posting with a purpose, selling strategies, and then your foundation for being able to list your product online somewhere. That's awesome. Wow. Um, I had a thought a moment ago. Oh, um, somebody commented, who was it? It was Laura, Laura Goss. And she said, I don't want to do lives because I still paint. I think she means I paint really slow. But what you were talking about is not necessarily showing how to paint it online, but she like showing how to decorate your porch with that door hanger. Yeah, so that would be an option for somebody like Laura who feels like they paint too slow to paint on Facebook Live. Um, you know, like the three tier, uh, three tier tray kits. Mm -hmm. Um, those are really popular and trending right now and something that you guys could even get into. So it's really easy to get a three tier tray and already have your base kind of set up with your florals or little stuff. And then you're just going to exchange out something little. Like, I mean, you guys could take one of Tamara's like round designs and make it smaller mm -hmm. and, and then be able to switch that out on that three tier tray and do five different options that would fit on there. So sometimes it's a little bit less intimidating when we can just show people how to be able to use our product. Because here's the deal with your target market. A lot of times we're like that. I don't know how many of you guys type it in here have heard this. Um, that's really cute, but I don't know how to use it or I don't know how to decorate with it. I don't know what I would do with it. So a lot of times people think like, oh, I can only use a door hanger on the front door. Like that's the only place. Well, that's not true. I mean, sometimes they're cute hanging up in the bathrooms or if you do birth. Mm -hmm to be able to decorate for that. There's all different kinds of ways that you guys can use a round door hanger or a display teacher's gifts. I mean, the list goes on and on, you know, <laughs> what people can use that for, but you get so stuck in, this is a door hanger. It goes on a door and our customers who aren't in our creative world, they might only be thinking that and like, well, how many door hangers do I need? Well, you need one for every season for one. And then you need one for every room in the house. And that's <laughs> You know, so it's just really cool if you guys can show your audience and sometimes it makes it a little bit less awkward and nine times out of 10, they're like, oh, I didn't even think of that. You know, uh -huh. so that's the kind of stuff that we teach and talk about the customer psychology and how to be able to really get connected and, and truly build a relationship with your people. That's what it really boils down to. It's all about serving them, too. You know, you're not just providing a product. You're showing them how to use it and how to be confident when they go to display it in their home so that they know it looks like nice. I can go to Hobby Lobby and buy five really cute things to decorate my tiered tray with. And then I get home and I freeze up because I'm like, OK, I don't know how to arrange this on the tiered tray. So then I go over to my friend's page who decorates tiered trays all the time. And I'm like, all right, let me watch how she does this because I can decorate. I mean, I can buy the cute decorative things or I can make them. But for some reason, I get hung up on the actual placement of the thing. So if that's one of your things that's that you're good at, you know, lean into that. Absolutely. Uh, somebody was asking, what is the best platform uh, to sell on or what is the best platform online to market our products? For marketing, um, if you guys are 
coming with me, I'm going to always tell you Facebook. Um, that's what I love. Um, I, that's what I'm good at. That is what I teach. Uh, mm -hmm. I love Facebook just because of the user experience that most people know how to be able to use it. It's not scary for our customers, but there is a lot of different places that we can market our product. You've got Instagram. Tamara is like the TikTok queen. Um, you know, you have Pinterest. A lot of people think that Pinterest is social media. It's not. It's a search platform, but it's also a way for us to be able to drive traffic. So there's a lot of different ways. Uh, but if you're coming with me, girls, it's I'm going to we're going to work on Facebook. That's what we're going to work on. Uh, Laura says, I'm so interested now in this class. And then Roxana says, uh, my whole life changed after doing lives and live sales. Both of these ladies have great information. Thank you for that, Roxana. Roxana, Roxana was one who signed up for the code book through um, the Southern Adornments Live last mm -hmm. year. And all of those ladies that um, signed up for that code book course, I have seen a remarkable change in their business over the last year. And this past year, we did not do like, Ashley, do you remember at that live event, people were whispering a little bit about COVID. But at that time, it was the week before the entire country got shut down. We had no idea what was about to happen. No, we were concerned about the tornado. <laughs> yeah, because there had been a tornado the weekend before in Nashville. And then I had my event like three days after that. And then about a week after we all got home, the entire country was put on lockdown. So I know these ladies that signed up for your code book were like thanking their lucky stars that they had decided to start learning how to sell online. Because if you're stuck at home, you can't really go out and sell in public anymore. And so many of our people, I mean, none of us have been through a world pandemic before. I mean, we, there's no argument that 2020 was a little bit scary, you know, whenever uh, every, it was just the unknown. Unknown things are scary. And we're sitting here thinking, like, how do we pivot our online business? Like, how is this going to work? How are we going to be able to help our members? And here was the crazy part about it. If you had your business online and you had this solid foundation set up, it actually, most of my people, I shouldn't say most, over half of my people had fourth level quarter sales happening on Facebook lives and on their Etsy stores. It was crazy. I mean, we literally hit fourth level quarter. Um, it, it was just unreal with the sales that we had. So I, I was thankful that the people that invested in the code book because we were able to help support them through that process. And, and there was no doubt we had to kind of transition. We had to pivot, which is something that us business owners and entrepreneurs are really good at is pivoting when we need to be able to pivot of what needs to happen. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that was crazy. It was. Uh, some of you guys were asking how to get uh, signed up for the code book. I put the comp, I put the link in the video description, but I also put it in the comments just now. So be sure and use that link. That's my special affiliate link for Ashley, where I can send you over to her. Um, somebody asked how much the code book class is. I know you've got a couple of payment um, options for them, right? Yeah, it's $447 for the eight week guided experience, or you can split that up into two payments for 249. So if you checked out today, you would put, what is today's date? The fourth, it's the fourth, March 4th. You would pay again on April 4th. Um, and so that's how that is. It's an eight week guided experience. I always like to tell everybody this. If you sign up for the course, how many of you guys have taken courses and they've just been emailed to you? Or you sign up for a course and you just get dumped into a really big group and then you just go and cipher around until you figure out what's going. Well, I call this a guided experience because you have access to the area on the website that has all pre-recorded, so we don't have to ever truly worry about my stinky internet that I have out here living in the country. Um, so there's that. But then you also have a Facebook group that I do live coaching, just like what we're doing right now and how mm -hmm. you guys are asking me questions. We come in and we answer that. Um, you have your community. We do a thing that I love to talk about and it's called laser focuses and they're done through zoom and everybody gets to come in and we have a topic. So our very first laser focus will actually be around your target market. So you'll come in, we'll break you guys out into little zoom rooms with other peers that are in there. You get connected with other like-minded people that are where you're at. And really for me and Tamara, and we can even touch on this a little bit. It's huge to have a connection with people that are 
are very close to where you're at in business. And Tamara and I have been buddies for two and a half years now. We went through the same program and um, we have affiliated for each other. We're there to be able to pep each other up. Tamara just kicked my butt right before we got on here. and was like, what are you? you know, Peer coaching. <laughs> it's important to be able to have those people that you mm -hmm. and so that's something that's really really important within my program is that we try to get you guys connected with your peers as well to be able to move through the course and and all of that yes and sometimes my best ideas come from those little things because it, it either it's either bleh, it either comes through me talking through the, the problem or the situation and like having that revelation or somebody else who has done it before kind of gives me a little tip or something that I hadn't thought of. And I'm like, that's brilliant. I got to write that down. And that can come from anybody. It can come from somebody who's just brand new in business who maybe is just looking at things with fresh eyes or it can come from somebody who's been doing business for a long time. So um, those pure things are really important. Um, Natalie wants to know, how often do you offer this class? one time a year. That's it. Yep. So, and it's only for four days, right? Tomorrow's the last day to sign right. up. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, and here's why this is why I do this. A lot of people think that, Oh, you'll do it again in the fall. And I don't. And you know how I was just talking to you guys about community. My community is so important to me um, that with something like this. It is, it's, um, I will not lie to you guys. It's intense. I need for you to show up. You know, you don't have to live in there, but I need for you to show up and be able to ask the questions because I can't help you move your business forward if you're just a wallflower and you don't ever ask mm -hmm. questions. So I need for you to show up and for you to interact in order to get the most out of that experience. But um, basically what ends up happening is afterwards, if you want, if you want Etsy, you want Amazon handmade, you want Shopify, blogging, Pinterest, all the things that go with running an online business, you can join me monthly afterwards into my business mentoring program. But you have to go through my eight week course first. I don't know about you guys, but I do. I don't like myself and I belong to a few different memberships. I just don't like it whenever I get put into a big group of people with no guidance. This is why I my course on the front end because it is so important to get everybody on the same page. If I'm doing that a couple of times a year, um, it basically means that I'm in course mode for four months and so are my people. And then trying to connect my already existing members with the people that are just coming through, it just makes it kind of messy and unorganized and doesn't allow the um, the connection to happen with my people. And so we all go in people who have been with me for almost three years now, they're coming through the code book as well. And we get you guys all connected within those two months, we learn, we go back to the basics with everything. And Tamara and I were just talking about this. Mm -hmm. My members have been with me. Some of them have even hit six figures. They are so excited about coming through the code book because they want to get back to the basics. Tamara, tell them what we were just talking about. Um, are you talking about before we went on live here? Yeah, talking about going old school. Oh, yeah. Um, because sometimes when you've been doing this online for a while, like Ashley and I, you kind of get in this rut of feeling like you have to have everything perfect. You have to have all your ducks in a row before you launch something. And that's only because our audiences have gotten so big and we have teams behind us. I can't just throw a wrench in things and be like, hey, I'm launching this tomorrow because I know who's going to pay the price for it on the back end. It's going to be my team. Right. And so I always feel like I have to have everything planned out in advance and all this. And so I struggle sometimes with that because I'm like, well, I feel like I can't like be spontaneous and do something new, but we're getting ready to do this lettering class that we're going to have signups for starting Monday. Right. I came up with this idea last week, told my team about it. They're pulling it together this week for me, but we're going to go old school. We're going to teach it in a Facebook group. All the videos are going to be live. Normally we pre-record everything and it's all like hosted in a pretty membership platform and all this stuff. We're not doing it that way this time. We're going to have a sign up page. And then once you sign up, you go into a Facebook group and all the fun's going to happen live there. So it's OK to do it down and dirty old school if you need to in order to make the thing happen, because done is better than perfect. 
That's right. And so that's one of the reasons why everybody going through the code book every year, it just kind of sometimes our business even takes turns. And, you know, I might bring in another stream of revenue that I need to look at a different target market for people. So then we need to brainstorm content ideas that's going to get connected with those people. So anyway, it's just kind of one of those things. We all go back to our basics. We all go back to that foundation. It's you're never too far advanced to try to think about your audience. Never. Yeah. If you ever get so big that you're no longer thinking about the people that you're serving, then Tamara and I probably aren't going to be the right mentors for you anyway, right? <laughs> yep. Those things. It's always about our people. And um, so it's all about you as you come into into um, my world with the code book. It is all about you and your experience. And so that's why I only open up one time a year for four days. I'm kind of amazed by that myself. Can you imagine only having a product? And I come from a product selling world. And so I cannot even fathom being able to sell one product for four days. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, it just kind of blows my mind, but that's the way that we do it. So our experience with our members is rich and it's connected with other people. That's, yeah, that's why. Misty Money says, for anybody who's on the fence, do it. I started in Ashley's first code book class and my business has never been the same. <laughs> so here's a story about Miss Misty. Um, Misty, you guys see this I've got on? Misty mm -hmm. Carol Maker and uh, Misty and I are feeling really fancy. So Misty's actually in my mastermind that I host. And so she came through the code book in 2019. Mm -hmm. She was in my program and then she qualified to be in the mastermind. Well, anyway, we feel really techy because she's an apparel maker and we connected our two Shopify sites and she is shop, she is drop shipping for me. So she actually, I lettered my code book swag here. So it says creative. And then we always do hashtag code book 2021 for whatever class is coming in and then dream, dream hard, work harder. So we designed these and we've got baseball caps and all the things. And Misty was able to put it onto apparel and we connected our websites and she's drop shipping. How cool is that? So one of our own, cool. our staff. So did they get, do they uh, get to order one of those shirts after they sign up? Yeah, I've got all kinds. We've got t-shirts and hoodies and baseball caps and bags. And it's got this. And then my logo is actually a magnifying glass. And it says creative code books. So we have those on. Hold on. I've got it right here. I got to show you. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Um, Brenda, uh, the letter class is going to be signing up starting Monday. It'll be $10. Look how cute this is. Oh, that is so cute. And just says creative code book. So we've got hats and shirts and, you oh, know, yeah. just so we can all be a part of it, you know, and so fun. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> um, and then somebody else asked a question. Pam wants to know, she said, I'm brand new to business. Is this going to help me? I'll tell you what, Pam, I would. And this is not no offense to anybody, but I would rather take a business baby. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't a rookie. Know, but a rookie, you know, um, I would rather take you in the beginning and be able to teach you all the right things to be able to do. Then um, a lot of times, usually who I work with, and I shouldn't say I would rather have that, but mm -hmm. most of the time, the people that I work with have started a business page for a couple of years and it's not working for them. They don't understand the platform. Uh, they don't understand who they're marketing to. So if I can get somebody at the very beginning of their business, I hope my goal is that I can save you two to three years in trying to fumble around and learn all of the bad mistakes and all of the bad habits that more than likely probably about 85 percent of people that come to me in my program have developed mm -hmm. and i would much rather take somebody at the very beginning of of a business now here's what i will tell you if you're going to come to me i would really like for you to already have a product that you're going to sell i can't help with product development you need to know what it is that you want to do for a business um some people are coming in and they still haven't even picked out their business name yet if that tells you anything <laughs> yeah that's pretty new that's pretty new but that's the thing that hangs people up sometimes is it's yeah. like they're afraid to start anything because they haven't chosen a name yet yeah so we do have some people that's like, I haven't even chosen a name. I need to get started. It is helpful if you can already have a Facebook business page set up and have a product. But we do have some people in there that haven't even started their Facebook business page yet. So honestly, to answer you, I would rather get you from the very beginning than have to try to re help somebody revive a page that's been let go for three years. Mm -hmm. 
um, it really, really hurts us on social media when we just like we start something, we've been inconsistent, and then we just let it go. It's hard to revive that. We can do it, but it's it's difficult. So yeah, yeah I think it's for you. Um, and then Laura wants to know if you have any tips for somebody who's not a salesperson and they're shy about pushing product. Oh, <laughs> um, if you're very shy, Facebook lives, once again, probably isn't going to be um, like that top notch marketing strategy for you. So what do you do then? Um, a lot of times it's easier to take a picture of our product or even put our hand, like put the phone down on our hands as we're making our product. Mm -hmm. so we have to talk um, as we are doing. So you can still do video content without you ha even having to talk. You know, we can do um, all different kinds of strategies to be able to help you get yourself put out there. But what I will tell you is for somebody who is not a salesperson, um, there's other strategies. It might not be exactly through the code book selling strategies as far as like your live sale or your five and five. But you guys, I've got some people that sell on Etsy, which I don't want to confuse you guys because I don't teach Etsy inside of the code book. That's in my monthly program after that I have. So if they want to learn that after the code book, they can join the membership part. That's right. Okay. And, um, and it's $47 a month after, but you don't, you're not committed to taking that. I guess I should say you're not committed to taking it, but afterwards there's Etsy, there's Amazon handmade. And if you are a shy person, then the one thing I will tell you is you need to get really, really good at taking pictures. And then we get, we need to get you really good at SEO because I've got some members that literally six figures of selling on Etsy. It takes a while to get, mm -hmm. we've got to do our product. We've got to understand our SEOs. We've got to be able to get good pictures and be, um, you know, competitive in our industry with everything. Uh, but if you're shy, then we just learn to be able to drive traffic to those platforms. So we can start our Pinterest. We can start blogging if you're a decent writer. You know, I know a lot of shy people that don't really like to talk to people, but they love to write. So email marketing might be a better, um, you know, connection for you and blogging, those types of things. There's all different kinds of ways that you can be successful. You don't have to be a salesperson that's out in everybody's face. Um, but there's other areas that you'll have to work on in order to be successful. I mean, that's, that's just, that's just the truth of the matter, right? Mm -hmm. um, Denise wants to know if your program can help wreath makers. I mean, Denise, really anything that is a product that you make, she can help you sell. It doesn't have to be sign making or door hanger painting. It could be anything. Yeah, I have. Well, I don't know if you just joined, but I have bow. I had a bow maker that literally mm -hmm. just had, you know, um, a sale. We've got candle makers. I have... Um, one or two wreath makers inside of there. I do have a lot of painters because I'm a sign maker by trade. We just, our vibe kind of attracts, attracts our tribe. We've got people who do wholesale. I've got boutique owners. I have a coffee shop that's in there. I've had a real estate agent that's come through the code book. We've got... Who else do we have? Jewelry. Jewelry makers are inside of there. So there's all kinds of people. The solid foundation through the code book really can be utilized for any business. I mean, we're teaching you every, it doesn't matter what business you have, you have a target market. I mean, if you're mm -hmm. a agent, you need people who are either, you know, looking to buy a home, they qualify for a first time home buyer. So what does that person look like? If you stop and think about it, every single business, it doesn't matter what it is you have a target audience. We've got to be able to find them. Yeah. And if you're just uh, trying to sell to family and friends, that may not be your target audience. I know somebody commented that earlier. They said they're having a hard time getting sales because they said her family and friends are not her target audience. And so that's so true. We've got to get out there and, and find those people who want to buy from us. And one of the reasons why it's so important to have your business online, because I don't know about you guys, but I'm from an itty bitty town. I'm here in Missouri. I live in a town of like outside of town, actually, of a thousand people. And so if you think that my ideal target market is right here in my town of a thousand people, it's not. I can reach California to New York to, I mean, I shipped my product to Canada and we've shipped it to Mexico and Australia and, um, uh, U.S. like United States and uh, like naval bases and 
all kinds of places. I mean, we can go internationally. We don't have to, you know, just be focused in on our town. And sometimes whenever we're just starting business, that's a little overwhelming to think about. But it's mm-hmm. true. Having your business online, you don't have to just be with family and friends. Yeah, you can live in the middle of nowhere with crappy internet and still have a successful business. Yes. <laughs> and Jill Estelle asked, what's the difference between Ashley's code book and Tamara's paint to profit? So my paint to profit membership just teaches you primarily about door hangers. And so we focus on how you can sell your door hangers. We teach about paint parties and things like that. But the things we talk about are so different than what Ashley teaches about. Her strategies are specific to what has worked for her. Um, And so she's able to help everybody, not just door hanger painters. I'm only helping door hanger painters. And I feel like mine is a little bit more of like a a coaching style. Yours is a little bit more of like a training specific with coaching, like paired with it. So um, they're just very different, but mine is niche specific to door hangers. That's right. Crystal says, I'm a photographer, cookie maker, and sign maker, and I joined to hopefully increase my target audience and sell more services. That's so exciting. It is. It sounds like she's already got lots of uh, tools in her tool belt to help her be successful. Oh, my goodness. Do you know all the content we could do with cookie making and then your photography? Oh, Mm -hmm. wow. That's and then Brittany Murphy says, two of my favorite business mentors in one place. Oh, Lord, my head's going to explode with all of this info in a good way. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Priscilla wants to know if you teach how to protect you uh, from Facebook against hackers. Um, well, <laughs> not specifically, but what I will tell you is actually the this isn't going to really benefit you very much uh, right now. I did do a challenge and showed uh, this was just last week, actually, that where you can go on your personal profile picture. So if you go to your personal profile and you go to your settings, there will actually be a privacy there and you need to set up like your two person mm-hmm. authentication. I always a mess big up. word. <laughs> it is such a big word. Um, you need to set that up to where you can get like a text and that will help. It's not a guarantee, but it will help. So you will at least get a text um, if somebody is trying to hack into you. So give that a try. That's good to know. And then Jennifer wants to know if you have to have a license to sell on Facebook. Um, No. However, if you are looking to sell products, you probably need to get one fairly soon just because of your tax purposes. You know, in our personal taxes, we can't really deduct all of the things that we like to be able to do with our hobby. But if you have a business, then you can deduct your paint and your paint brushes or your ribbon or what you can deduct all of that as business expenses. With our personal, just a hobby, we can't do that. So I would really recommend if you are looking at starting a business to go on ahead and get your, your LLC or at least your DBA set up with doing business as is what that is Mm -hmm. at least get that set up with a number that that way you can um, be able to run that properly but in order to sell on Facebook no you don't have to okay good to know yeah I always tell people to like start with irs.gov get your business like your EIN number and then go to your local like city hall or wherever you people normally register for things and say okay what do I need to do next because those people will be able to tell you and I feel like it's a little bit the process looks a little bit different depending on where you live so it's so different a lot of times if you go to your secretary of state they'll Mm. For your small business association for your state as well, um, they can kind of help guide you through. I don't help with taxes or anything like that just because every single state is different. I mean, there are some states that don't collect sales tax. I like Oregon and Florida. There might and there might be one. They're, they're just so different. So I don't ever give out like right. tax things. I always refer people to like your CPA and that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Ashley, is there anything else you want to share with us? Um, if for Jennifer, if you were asking how to join. There's a link in the video description, and I've also put it in the comments here. Tomorrow's the last day to sign up, and it won't ha- you won't get to sign up again until 2022. Yeah. So, Ashley, do you have any parting words for us about the code book? You know, as people, this might be some of the first time that any of you all have seen. So, you know, I I might not be able to. Ah, uh, hey, sitting my niece today. She just woke oh. up from her nap. So. <laughs> Distraction, baby. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> baby. 
you know, it's kind of one of those things that you might not um, have trust with me. You might not know who I am. Um, come over to Creative Strategies and just follow me. If you're not like sold on this crazy lady still drinking coffee in the afternoon yet, just follow me around. Um, but if you are um, coming at a place from fear, like if you've been following me because of Tamara or whatever the case may be, and, and it's fear, you cannot let fear be able to dictate what your success is. And um, a lot of times it's, it kind of makes me sad sometimes because I know that I can help them or somebody like Tamara can be able to help you and you don't move forward because you don't believe in yourself and you're scared of the unknown. We'll never know unless you do it. So it's one of those things that I understand this might not be the right time or the right place for you, but I don't plan on going anywhere. Um, and if you want to sign up, please, please use Tamara's link because she has been so gracious enough to allow me to come here. And thank you guys for giving me a little bit of your time of day. And um, so, yes, if you sign up for that, use Tamara's link. And then also tonight at seven o'clock, I'll be over on my page with some of my student stories about the accountability. Um, so even if you see that and then you go to a link, please make sure to go over to Tamara's uh, link to be able to use that as well. OK, and so that's on your Facebook page, Creative Strategies. Yeah. Creative Strategies with Ashley Rates. OK, we'll send them over there. Yeah. So if you want to learn any more about Ashley or kind of get a feel for her teaching style, just go watch some of her Facebook lives that she's done this week talking about all the things. And it'll kind of give you an idea of whether or not, you know, you're ready. But I did see somebody comment earlier that they said they'll have to wait till next year. You know, yeah. money, the money's not right right now. And I understand that. But I do know that if you don't invest in your business, like you have to be willing to put money in your business in order to get money back out of it. And I know that there are so many people who um, will invest in this and it will pay them back in spades within the first, like before the course is even over, they'll already have made that money back. So if that's one of your things that's holding you up, have Ashley help you figure out a strategy while you're in this course to help you pay yourself back before the course is over. Mm -hmm. That way you aren't, you know, hurting for the money after you've signed up. Yeah. And that's actually built into my program. I didn't talk about that. But that's awesome. We have a thing that's called the golden grit. And the goal is for you guys to be able to pay for the course by the time that it gets done. And that's why I, um, my module three is leading you through um, a 14 day lead up to whatever style of sale that you wanna be able to have. And the goal is for you to make $447 or at least half of it make some. Mm -hmm. You know, but I can't guarantee, I never can promise that. Yeah, I you can't promise it. Multiple students who have done it, but I can't promise that because I don't know how you've shown up on your page. If it's a brand new page, it might be hard within three weeks to be able mm -hmm. to, do that, you know, but I'm um, so many, so many guys of my students have done it. So anyway, um, I look forward to getting to know you a little bit better. And uh, Tamara, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. It's nice talking to you again. <laughs> All, right. All right. Bye, everybody.